Hey guys, it's Nadine and I'm back to talk story with you guys. Well, not so much talk story, but I wanted to share with you my latest currentlies. So I have a bunch of things on my list today to talk to you guys. The first thing is I have been on this kick to exercise. Now, I know you guys are like, but you have fiber, you have MS, you should not be exercising. Correction, um, if you have those things, it's actually better that you do exercise to actually keep moving. So on this guy on Instagram, I actually am a follower of his and his name is Michael Morelli. And um, his Instagram is Morelli Fit and I will put it down there. Anyhow, he has this program and it's an eight week program and it is called HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. It takes me literally 15 to 20 minutes to get through the whole routine. Um, exercise days are Monday, Wednesday, Friday is when you do your um, HIT training and then Tuesday, Thursday is you do cardio. Cardio for me, I do treadmill 30 minutes and then I actually do hot yoga too on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So those are the things that I love. I've been loving it so much that I've actually been doing it for, I wanna say this is my second round of um hit max so a total of like 16 weeks and I have been loving it seeing changes I have to make some changes to um my nutrition but that's a whole nother thing and a whole nother talk topic that we'll talk about coming up um but if you guys are interested in trying a program that is doable especially for females that suffer from some kind of autoimmune problems you might want to try this it's it's hard don't get me wrong and some days it takes me a little bit longer to get through, but it's still totally doable for me. So I really, really love it. That's one thing. Okay, so now talking about nutrition. I have stumbled upon this book. Um, I actually saw it because Beyonce, I follow her on YouTube and she posted this thing. It's actually called The 22 Day Revolution and the author is called Marco Borges. Now apparently he has been like her nutritionist and trainer and health coach or whatever for a while now and now she's finally talking about a um, nutrition plan that she's been doing that actually has been working I just started this book I will tell you this um, I always read books one is usually an informative educational product and the second one is always like a fun feel-good kind of thing this is my educational one so this book is actually all about um, changing your nutrition and going towards a plant-based diet now I haven't made the choice on whether or not I'm going to do that, but I wanted to kind of get a feel for it, research it before I actually made that jump. So that's why I'm reading this book. The very first part of the book, a good portion of the book actually, there's a lot of research, a lot of like um, facts and findings from um, research and stuff. He breaks it down by weeks. So basically week one, he tells you everything you're gonna need to shop for um, in week one. And then also following that is the recipes um, for week one. And it has three recipes a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It also gives you healthy snack alternatives as well. So that's something if you guys are interested in, you might wanna look at. Like I said, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to make the jump to an all plant-based um, diet, but uh, it's something that I feel like is worth a look. Definitely. Now, I have found by complete accident, um, how did I find this? I was really hungry one day. And I stumbled upon the Kind Bar. Um, they were selling it individually. And for some reason, I was looking at it and it said um, caramel and sea salt. And I was like, oh, I like the combination. But it was mostly nuts, okay? So I was like, you know what? Nuts nowadays tends to be the healthy alternative to just candies. If you guys are looking for more of a semi-healthy alternative for a snack, this is one thing that's good. It's actually like a little protein bar and it has nuts and it has different flavors too. So I have been loving the caramel and sea salt. I actually have also been loving, I think it's called the almond and macadamia nut bar too. Um, so much so that I've actually, I started to buy it in the big boxes, um, which you can find at any of your local grocery stores. Usually for me, like when I go to Walmart, it's in the section that has the vitamins and whatnot. So you guys might want to um, try that out. I really, really like it. Okay, so then let's talk about books. So the first book I mentioned to you was The 22 Day Revolution. Um, and again, the book is by Marco Borges. Now, here's the thing. The other thing I read was a book called I Am That Girl, which is actually by Alexis Jones. And, um, and this book is all about like how to find your truth or how to be your authentic self and how to discover who you actually are, or what your purpose is. Now, I didn't need those things, but every now and then I think you, it's good to read something that is a feel-good, funny, comical read that kind of reminds you um, to keep yourself in check, and that's what I needed. Um, I needed to 
remember the things that made me unique and the things that makes me love me. And um, I think that everybody should get like a little bit of a reminder every now and then. So if you guys are looking for a funny read um, with great humor, um, very down to earth kind of thing, I would highly suggest this book, I Am That Girl. All right, so I lied. I actually read four books. <laughs> um, if you follow me on Instagram, you have you saw me post a picture of another book that I was reading a few months ago by Marie Kondo. Now, Marie Kondo is a, for lack of a better term, a person that goes into somebody's house and um, shows them how to clean out their entire house or whatever areas they're looking to clean out and reorganize and only keep the things that make them happy. So I read that book and it's a very quick read by the way. So I started reading the book and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. It really does give you a jump start. Now there have been a ton of people on YouTube that has shown like their entire process of what they did to tidy up. Um, if you guys are a follower of Organized Like Jen, My Housewife Life, um, that used to be her channel. Now she's just going by Jennifer Ross. Um, she's the one who I actually saw this book from. And I had been following her series on her tidying up and that sparked me to read this book. Now, I did not go through the extreme of like um, putting everything into piles because it says that you have to take your things. So you're going to start off with clothes. So all of your clothes, you're going to put it into one big pile. And you're going to sort your clothes one by one and say, does this make me happy? Does this make me happy? Okay. I didn't do it like that. Went into my closet, I already looked and I knew what things did not make me happy and what things made me happy and just started pulling it down. So what I did not want to keep, I put it down automatically, it went into a garbage bag to be donated. And that's what I did. I really have to tell you, I was afraid to put all of my clothes in the middle of the floor for fear of like being overwhelmed. <laughs> so I took a little bit of a detour. I made my own little system, which actually worked. I have been on this kick to clean. Um, so it started off with just my clothes and I thought I'm just gonna do it with my stuff, but then it's gotten out of hand to the fact that, to the point where I'm actually forcing my kids to clean up their own stuff. <laughs> and uh, I don't think they like it, but um, it is what it is. I've been purging like a fool, okay? And I'm gonna tell you something. I have been purging so much that, well, I've been, I call it spring cleaning. Um, some people call it konmari. Kon okay, that's the terminology that this lady uses. Um, the konmari kon method. Um, I just call it massive spring cleaning. And it's been a while since I've actually done a massive spring cleaning. Um, but when you start to purge things, I'm just gonna tell you from my own experience, it's kind of addicting. Um, and it's very freeing and it feels good to let stuff go. And when I was throwing things out, I was like, why in the world did I hold on to that for such a long time, you know? So it's been really great. Um, it's been a process. Um, what I have done was I have in my calendar, I um, designated weeks for different areas of my house. Um, and that's how, what I've been doing. Now, the very last place, well, the very last two places that I'm going to do is actually my crap room and which is where I'm at right now. <laughs> and, um, our garage. If you guys are interested in learning a different method or a different way of thinking about organizing and decluttering and purging, I highly suggest this book. All right, so then book number four, and this one is a more feel good, not really feel good per se, but this is one of those like mindless reads, okay? So I always read, I like I said, I try to read something to educate myself, and then I always try to read something that's very mindless. Um, because, you know, Truth be told, reality is always so very overwhelming that when you can escape into something, it's kind of nice sometimes. It's a nice little getaway. It's kind of like a staycation, you know, in a book. Um, so the book that I have been reading is by an author called Sherilyn Kenyon. Now, this is actually book seven of a series of books. Um, and this book is called Born of Defiance. And it talks about, um, it's more like sci-fi kind of thing, sci-fi romance um, and, um monarchy systems so if you guys want a read that is mindless but interesting at the same time um i would highly suggest this book i'm not gonna actually do a summary i will link for the book below because i really suck at summaries of this kind of nature <laughs> like i can talk about the other educational stuff um really easy but this kind of book to sum it up i don't want to give any like spoilers you know what i'm saying <laughs> Okay, so then let's talk about drinks. Now, I'm a grown adult, and every now and then when it comes to the end of the week, um, on occasion, not 
every week, but sometimes I will partake in some kind of alcoholic beverage. And I cannot drink um, red wine. I have kind of mentioned that in the 10 things about me. I was tagged on Instagram to do the tag 10 things about me. So one of the facts was that I cannot drink red wine. Um, apparently some Asians, uh, we are allergic to the tannins in the red wine. What it does is it makes you break out in hives and or can close your windpipes. Um, so because of that, I stopped drinking any kind of wine altogether just because I was afraid. Well, lo and behold, in the last, I don't know, five, seven years, I have found that I can drink white wine and Moscato, uh, which is an Italian kind of sweet, um, bubbly wine without a problem. And ever since then, I have been trying a whole bunch of different kinds of Moscatos. Um, and I always post it on IG, the ones that I find that I love. My latest find is one that I found called Bug Juice. It was just like an accident. I was going into Sam's. I was walking towards the back. So I was making like a beeline across. And then ta-da, there it was, Bug Juice. I'm like, hmm, that looks pretty interesting. It had a cute little, um, cute little bees on it. And then I was like, let me give this a try. So I bought it. I think it was like $12.99 or whatever. Took it home, had it in the fridge for like a while, you know. And then maybe like two weeks ago, I had a long ass week, no joke. And I was like, let me bust this thing open. So I opened it up and it was so good. So good. If you guys are Moscato lovers, like I know a lot of my girlfriends are on Instagram. This is actually a very sweet Moscato. I highly suggest it because it's such a good Moscato. All right, so now let's get into some girly stuff. It's another thing that I have been loving and I have been using it for quite some time now, and I keep forgetting to talk about it, and I don't know if I did before, but I'm pretty sure I did not, um, is this actual, see that? This is called Ultra Repair Cream. Now, let me tell you guys a funny story about this. So, because you know, I'm all about funny stories. Um, <laughs> I was in Vegas, let me think, back in November. And when you're in Vegas, the air there is very different from where I am at and it's very dry. And so I find that when I'm there, my skin dries out and it like, it looks horrible, honest to God. Um, and it's not a good thing to try to put foundation on dry flaky skin because it just looks like, I don't know, the desert, <laughs> you know, um, it's like dry and like everything is all like, yeah no not good no bueno um so anyhow so i went into sephora um and i think i went to the sephora in the miracle mile and i had asked the girl um what she would recommend so she did recommend two products one of them happened to be um argan oil uh, which i didn't really love I bought it but i didn't love it um i actually bought samples is what i did buy and thus this is my recommendation if you're trying a new product always ask if they have a sample size so that way you can try it without spending too much money but then still get the same effect or still see how the product is like um and then if they don't have a sample ask them to give you a sample because sephora is really good about giving samples so um i bought the sample size of the argan oil i found that that did not work as well as this thing right here so here's the thing this thing is actually a face cream well, it's a cream that you can put over all over the place, okay? I happen to use it on my skin. Now, when I was in Vegas, like I said, the air is really dry there. There's something about it that just dries you out. Um, so I use this, and I'm not even joking. Within 24 hours, my skin was rehydrated. It, it was no longer dry and flaky. It was actually very nice so that when I put on my foundation, it didn't look not. Um, so I really highly recommend this. Now, Here's the other thing. When I got back to Texas, um, it was great there too because this is, it helps to hydrate your skin, but it's also not oily or greasy. So I find that towards the end of the day, I'm not oily. It's so odd because usually when I put on face creams, I tend to notice that towards the end of the day, I get oily, which is like, you don't want to look like a frying pan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so this thing I have been loving. Now, I also watch Ingrid Nielsen. She also uses something similar. However, she just started using this one made by the same brand, um, but it's actually one that makes everything matte. So I think I'm gonna try that, but I've been using this literally for over a year because this was last November when I got it um, and I have been loving it. And it's really, oh my gosh, here's the thing. Winter time, it's good too, because winter time is another time that you get really dried out. 
So what I do is I put a little bit on my hand and then um, I put it on my cheeks and whatever left over, I just kind of rub it into my, my back of my hands because I find that winter time, like for some area, for some reason, the back of my hands get like really dry and like crocodile-ish, which is not cute. <laughs> um, so if you guys want to give, if you guys are looking for a great face cream or overall cream in general, I would highly suggest this one and I will link for this below. A couple of other things. I have been, I love mascaras. So now... I go through phases where I use makeup and then I don't use makeup. However, my one consistent has always been mascara. That is something that I always use. Now, when I say I don't wear makeup, to me, that means like just mascara. And the rest of it is like no foundation, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so anyhow, one of my go-to favorite mascaras was the Hot and Naughty by MAC. But let me just say this. Sometimes, and you guys know, your schedules are busy. You don't have time to be running in the mall to no MAC counter to buy MAC products, right? And so you just want something that's really quick and over the counter. I have found the solution to that. One of my very favorite mascaras was the L'Oreal Voluminous. And this is what it looks like, okay? And this thing is great. I use it in the blackest black. Um, and I love it. Um, this gives you a lot of volume. However, if you're not careful, it will clump, which, you know what? I don't know a mascara that doesn't clump, actually. So to me, it's neither here nor there. Now, I have also found another thing by L'Oreal that I love, and it's their telescopic mascara. And this is what it looks like. And let me just say this. I am usually a lover of a mascara that has the regular or original type of wand. That's what I'm used to. That's what I love. Um, so when I got the telescopic mascara, I wasn't quite sure how much I was going to love it because the wand is different. The wand is actually very thin. And it's, when I got it, I was like, ooh, I don't know about this. Let me just say this. I have since changed my mind because the telescopic wand and the telescopic mascara actually gives your lashes a lot of length and it separates them really, really nicely. And it's also great for those bottom lashes. Now, I know there's a mascara out there. I think it's by Clinique that actually is made for bottom lashes. But to me, I'm like, why am I going to buy a mascara that's specifically just for bottom lashes when I have this that does top and bottom just perfectly? Now, here's a secret. What I have been doing, and if you guys want a little bit of volume and some length as well, I actually combine this. I put two coats of the Voluminous and two coats of, or as many coats of the Telescopic as you want. Depending on what you look at, what look you're looking for. If you're looking for volume, then do more coats of this and less of this. Or if you're looking for more length and not so much volume, then do more of this and less of this. You know what I'm saying? Um, actually, you can play around with it and they go really well together. And I love, love, love this combination so, so, so much um, that I have been rocking it every single day. So that's the mascara thing. So still keeping with the makeup theme, um, I have a couple of other things. <laughs> um, see, this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes I go with makeup. Sometimes I wear a lot of makeup. Sometimes I don't wear makeup at all. Um, well, not really a lot of makeup. I never really wear a lot of makeup. Um, but I have been on this like kick lately to learn how to do a really good wing liner. So here's the deal. Um, I had put it out there on Instagram and Facebook and I had asked my girlies on there, hey, you know what? What are your tips and tricks for a great wing liner? Because my thing was, I never really knew what angle the line should be as far as my wing goes. And I never knew how far to take it up. And I also asked them, what is a good liner that you guys recommend? And so I got like a bunch of responses. And let me tell you what, and a lot of my girlies on Instagram actually tagged me in other videos of other girls who had done wing liner tutorials really quickly that they wanted me to see, which was freaking awesome. So hello people, like, I love you guys for that. Thank you so much for doing that for me. It has actually, I've actually taken what you guys have said and used it and I now can say that I can do a wing liner like nobody's business, okay? <laughs> so keeping in the wing liner business, or wing liner thing, my girlfriend Melody, she told me that the best way to get a good nice line for your wing liner is to use washi tape. Now, if you guys are crafters, planner people, whatever, you guys have a ton of washi tape like myself. And let me just be honest, there are some washi tapes that I do not love. Um, and so what I'm going to do, or what I have been using, is I've been using my washi tape to go ahead and do my wing liner. Now, here's the great part about this. So all you do is you take the washi tape, right? And you take a piece of it. And what I do is I just tear it off. And then I kind of like run it on the back of my hand because you don't want it to be so, so, so sticky because what happens is if it's too sticky, when you pull it off your eye, you kind of pull the skin on your eye and it hurts like hell. <laughs> so you don't want that. So I leave it on my hand for a little bit to kind of like take some of the oils off the back of my hand. 
going to take it off. And what you're going to do is you want to line it up with the bottom of your your lower lash line right here. You want to line it up and put it up at an angle. That's the angle in which your liner should go. So your liner, your wing liner should actually angle at the same degree as your lower lash waterline right here. So it goes up like that. I never knew that, see? So when I was doing mine, my wing liner was actually going down like Egyptian-ish, you know what I'm saying? And it was not cute. <laughs> but then I guess, again, but then again, I guess it just depends on what kind of look you're looking for. If you like that kind, if your eye, if you want your eyes to look like more slanted in that direction, I guess it's good. Um, what I wanted was a very true cat eye or a wing liner, um, which actually kind of brightens your eyes and pulls it up a little bit. So you use this washi tape and you take your liner and you actually just draw it. Now when you pull the washi tape off, it leaves a very nice clean line, okay? And it depends on you about how dramatic you want your wing liner to be will determine how far up your liner will go. During the day, and I've been wearing sometimes wing liners during the day because now I got it down to a science, um, I just do a little bit of a liner. So I just do it right to my crease of my, my um, lid that is good enough i feel like but at night i have known to actually take it a little bit higher so that's a little bit more dramatic and you can actually really tell that there's a wing liner there but it kind of depends on what look you're going for and how comfortable you are with rocking a wing liner so now um on to wing liner stuff so i have found a couple of brushes and a couple of wing liners or um and a great like inexpensive totally inexpensive um cream liner that i've been using now my old liner that I was using um, was, one of them was over the counter and one of them was um, high end. So my high end one was actually from MAC and it was the um, Black Track, I think it was called. Um, I like that one, but I've had it for a little bit, I guess about a year. And what I have found was that it's no longer as creamy as it was when I initially got it, which is very sad because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of product in the jar and there's no way in hell that you could use it. So I wish, I had wished that it would, have lasted a little bit longer than it actually did. It's actually kind of dry, you know, dry right now. So that kind of makes me a little bit annoyed given the price I paid for it. Um, the other one I used was actually an over-the-counter one and I'll show you guys a picture of it here. Now I like it because I like the tip is actually one of those um, little soft brush tips or little soft sponge tips on it. And it is, you can get a really great line with that too. However, my newest one, which I actually found through somebody on, who told me, was it, my girlfriend Luana maybe? Oh, I can't remember. I don't know if it was on Instagram or Facebook that she told me. Anyhow, one of my girlfriends told me to try the e.l.f. Um, cream liner. Oh my gosh, this thing is so awesome, okay? Now, it's a little pot like this and you just screw it off and there is the liner right here. And like I said, it comes with a lot and it's very inexpensive. I think it was like not even more than I don't know, three bucks, four bucks or whatever. And the formula is so creamy and it lasts all day long. Um, it goes on so smoothly. The thing about cream liners or, you know, liners in and of itself is you want it to go on easily. So you don't want to smudge it. You don't want it to be like messy or whatever. This is so good. The formulation is so creamy that it goes on really nicely and fluid and it really, it, it dries to like a nice matte finish, which I love. Um, now for this, I actually use a Sephora brush um, and I think it's number 17. And it's a really like just a very thin um, brush so that you can draw on your liner. Now, if you have a hard time drawing on your liner, even with the washi tape thing that I mentioned, um, you can always go ahead and get an angled brush. Now the one that I have here is actually by MAC and it is their 208. So let me show you. And it's actually, if you can see, it's actually angled slightly upward. Now, here's the thing about this. The great thing is that it already has an angle. So um, all you do is you would just angle it like that when you put it on. And it's good to get that the start of a nice little angle for you. Um, so that's another thing that I highly recommend is an angle brush to help you out. Okay, so then for the last two, I promise to God, <laughs> makeup related products, um, I have also been on this kick about contouring um, because if you see my face, my face is very small and very um, round-ish, sort of, sort of. <laughs> the lady at Sephora said it's more like a oval shape, but I don't know. When I look at it, I think round. <laughs> um, anyhow, I 
don't even have cheekbones. I feel like I don't have cheekbones. I know I don't have cheekbones. Not really. Um, my face is so small. There's no place for it in here for cheekbones. You know what I'm saying? Um, anyhow, I have been on this kick about learning how to contour or contouring my face because I do want to accentuate or at least make it appear like I have cheekbones. So um, when I went into Sephora, I was talking to this lady. Her name is Teddy. I always talk to her. I always kind of see the same girls every time I go in. Anyhow, Teddy told me to try this product. So this is actually by Clinique and it is called the Chubby Stick. And I know you're like, holy smokes, that's kind of dark. But when you contour, you do want a darker shade. And so the thing I love about this, you pull it off and it actually has, you see that? Now, you don't want it to be a pointed edge because you don't want it to be a harsh line. So this kind of stubby round tip right here is actually perfect because what you can do is, what I do is, is I put it on my face and I kind of dab it in and I can kind of feel because the whole key to contouring is you kind of want it to be, they say you want it to be in the hollows of your cheek. So right underneath your cheekbone area. Now because my cheekbone is like literally like, I don't know, half an inch, <laughs> um, this allows me to put the thing right on my face and feel exactly where my cheekbone is and all I do is I kind of dot 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 um, this chubby stick along my cheekbone lines so that it comes out to be right in the hollow of where my cheekbone would have been. You know what I'm saying? And then I take this brush which is a brush by Sephora and I love this brush. It comes in a cute little case like this and that's for safekeeping so that the bristles don't get all like jacked up. Um, it's actually by Sephora and I will link for all of this stuff below again um, and it actually is a kabuki. It's a flat kabuki is what they call it. So as you can see it's very very thin this way. It's not like your traditional kabuki but the bristles are very compact and very tight so that way when you go ahead and contour it this angle right here and the way that the brush is designed allows you to kind of go in and soften up that contour line and kind of pull it up at the same time you don't want to pull your contour line down because then it's going to look like you're sagging and at my age I don't want to look like I'm sagging, okay? <laughs> so what you can do is you can take this brush and it's really great because it allows you to sweep it back and forth to define that contour and also soften it by doing this. Now you can use this for your contour, you can use this for your bronzer, whatever you want. You can also use this as a highlighter brush too. Um, so highlighting is a whole other thing and I have yet to find a really great highlighter but these are the two things that I found uh, for contouring that I really really love. Now by way of contouring, I actually contour after I put on my foundation or um, I've been using like a CC cream, not really foundation, but this is what I've been using. Loving these two things together in combination and um, if you guys are looking for a great contour and a contour brush, I would highly suggest this. Okay, so now let's talk about television. Now you guys know that I don't watch a whole lot of television. However, the television I do watch has always been DVR. Other program I've been watching and loving has been Empire. Oh my god, if you guys love um, music, I love music, I love anything to do with music, um, I love musicals, um, any kind of program with music in it, like Glee, that was one of my other favorites too a long time ago. Empire is my newest obsession. Now, they are done for the season, but they will be back, I think, like in September or so um, with their new season, and I cannot freaking wait. Um, and if you have not watched it and you want to see what the hype is all about, then go to fox.com and go ahead and watch. They have the entire season season one on there every single episode in in its entirety so that's a great way to catch up so that you guys will be ready when it um, comes back on air in September so now let's talk about movies okay so when I'm in my craft room I love to watch movies um, and it's kind of a double-edged sword it's good and it's bad it's good in that I'm in my craft room and I'm supposed to be crafting but then I find myself actually sitting there and watching the entire movie and not crafting <laughs> which is kind of like you know, ironic. <laughs> Anyhow, there have been two movies that I have come across and I have been loving them. Like when I say loving, I mean like loving. I am a feel good person. I like romantic comedies. I like things that are very lighthearted in the way of movies. So the two that I've actually found, the first one is called A Hundred Foot Journey, The Hundred Foot Journey. It's a really great, it, uh, really great storyline. It's actually based off of a book and the, this movie was actually produced by Oprah, um, which is another plus for me because I do love Oprah. Um, who doesn't love Oprah? Well, maybe some of you don't, but I love her. So there's that. <laughs> um, anyhow, she put together this movie. Love it. Love the characters in it. I love the storyline. Everything is just great. 
if you guys like uh, if you guys are foodies like myself and love things to do with food and family stuff i would highly suggest this movie now another dvd that i came across which was complete accident and it's called chef now the thing about chef is it is produced and written by a guy called john favre um now he also did other movies and has starred in other movies but always like the behind the scenes character or like the sidekicks of people or you know just an extra kind of thing but this guy is massive talented when it came to this one now the funny thing about this is this was actually produced as an independent film not really one that was out there for like it didn't get a lot of press it didn't get a lot of playtime which is a shame because i believe this movie is a great hidden gem honestly this movie weirdly um has a great cast of characters it has some really heavy hitters in it that i did not expect for instance um it has um robert downey jr in it it has sofia vergara in it um it has um oh gosh what is his name um john leguizamo in it love all these guys um it also has dustin hoffman in it it's people that I did not expect to see in this movie. It has been my new recent favorite movie, so much so that my kids have been watching it with me. I mean, there is some swearing in it, so watch that, but my kids are older, so that's not that big of a deal. But if you guys are looking for a new good movie to watch in your craft room, try this out because I, I do believe this movie, Chef, is right up there. All right, guys, so those are the things that I have been currently loving. I will link for everything in the description box below. I hope you guys check out some of the things that I recommended and let me know if you do. And if you have products or movies or any kind of makeup stuff that you guys have been loving yourself and want to share with me, I'm always game to learn. Or you can uh, private message me as well. As always, thanks for watching my videos and I'll talk to you guys later. TTFN, that's all for now.